When you're doing the volumes of revolution problems, they're not always going to be just one curve revolving around the axis. Sometimes they're gonna be a little bit harder, and sometimes they're gonna say, well, do it, do it between two curves. So revolve around this axis, but or around this axis, but I only want the volume between two curves. So it's the exact same formula. And this might remind you of area between curves. So it's the same thing. It's basically going to be the upper minus the lower. And it's just a little bit different here because if you're revolving around the x-axis, you do top minus bottom. So here's the formula. And I'm doing the uh, cross sections method here or the slicing method. Uh, it, the same principle works for the cylindrical shell method. So just remember that if I'm revolving around the x-axis for the cross-section method, I use dx. And if I've got two curves, I do the top minus the bottom. And remember, it's squared because the formula for a circle is pi r squared. And it's the same thing if I'm revolving around the x-axis. It's just I need to do right minus left. So it's the same formula as the volumes of revolution. And if you haven't seen those videos yet, I have them somewhere around here. I would recommend watching them first and then this video will make a lot more sense. All you really have to remember is you have to do the top squared minus the bottom squared or the right squared minus the left squared. Let me show you an example of how this is gonna work. So I wanna find the volume of revolution between two curves and I'm gonna do it between these two curves, x cubed and the square root of x, and I'm gonna revolve around the x axis. Let me draw this for you real quick, just so you can get an idea of what's going on. Now, x cubed looks like this. Let's see if I can draw that a little better, something like that. And the square root of x looks like that. So you'll see that they intersect here. And I can find this point of intersection by setting these two things equal. So x cubed equals square root of x. And if I want to undo that square root, I'll square both sides. So if I square something that's cubed, that's to the sixth. That'll be x. Subtract x from both sides. And then I can factor out an x. And... Uh, Pretty easy to see that my answers are going to be 0 and 1. Um, I'm assuming if you've gotten this far in calculus you can solve this guy. So that means when I do my integral I'll be integrating from 0 to 1. And since I'm revolving around the x-axis, if I spin this little area around coming out of the whiteboard back in, it's going to make I don't know, sort of like a double, a double leaf kind of volume. I'm not really sure how to describe that. But nonetheless, that's what it's going to be. So my formula for the cross sections method, since I'm revolving around the x axis, I'll need a dx out here. And it's pi r squared, so I put a pi. And now here's the different part. I have to do the top squared, so this time this function's on top, minus the bottom squared. So the top function here, the, fun the function that's on top, is the square root of x, and the formula says I have to square that, minus the bottom, which in this case is x cubed, and I also have to square that. Getting ahead of myself, already writing the answer. Square that. Okay, now I can simplify this. Um, and if you're at all confused about this, go ahead and restart the video or just go back to where I had the formulas, but all it is, it's the top squared minus the bottom squared. Or if I was revolving around the y-axis, I'd do the right squared minus the left squared. Now this is still a pretty simple integral to solve. Pi is a constant, so I'm gonna pull it out front and I can clean up the inside. If I square a square root, that just leaves me with what's ever on the inside. And if I have x cubed squared, I kind of already did that, that was x to the sixth. And now this is a very easy definite integral to solve. So I'll take the antiderivative, the antiderivative of x, 
I add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. The antiderivative of minus x to the sixth, I add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Write my evaluation bar from 0 to 1, and then I apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. I plug in the upper limit, that's 1 squared over 2 minus 1 to the seventh over 7, minus plug in the lower limit. And if you don't mind, if I just plug in zero, I'm gonna get zero. So I'm not even gonna bother really doing that. And one to any power is one. So that's pi times a half minus one to any power is one. One half minus a seventh. Let me think about that for real quick. Um, I can combine that pretty quickly by cross multiplying. It's gonna be seven minus two over 14. So that's going to be 5 over 14. And there we go. So it's, uh, I'll even write it like this, 5 pi over 14. So that is the volume of revolution between these two curves. And that's how you do volumes of revolution problems between two curves. You just have to remember it's the top minus the bottom or the left minus the right, and the same principle applies to the cylindrical shell method. I just did it here with the cross-section method. So I hope you got something out of this video. Please like and subscribe. I put new videos up every single day, and I'll see you in the next video.